Champagne? I don't mind if I do. Well, down the hatch, as we say at sea. Bon voyage. Look at all that silverware. Uh, trophies. You know, skeet shooting, dog breeding, water polo. Water polo, isn't that terribly dangerous? I'll say, I had two ponies drowned under me. Where's your hair collection? Mm. Yes, of course. Now, where could they have put it? You see, on Thursdays, I'm sort of lost around here. What's on Thursday? It's the cruise night off. You mean we're alone on the boat? Completely. You know, I've never been completely alone with a man before in the middle of the night, in the middle of the ocean. Oh, it's perfectly safe. We're well anchored. Ships in ship shape shape. And the Coast Guard promised to call me if there were any icebergs around. It's not the icebergs, but there are certain men who would try to take advantage of a situation like this. You're flattering me. Of course, I'm sure you're a gentleman. Oh, it's not that. It's uh, just that I'm um, harmless. Harmless? How? Well, I don't know how to put it, but I've got this thing about girls. What thing? They just sort of leave me cold. You mean like Fritchard? Well, it's more like um, a mental block. When I'm with a girl, it does absolutely nothing to me. Have you tried? Have I? I'm trying all the time. See? Nothing. Nothing at all? Complete washout. That makes me feel just awful. Oh, my dear, it's not your fault. It's just that every now and then Mother Nature throws somebody a dirty curve. Something goes wrong inside. You mean you can't fall in love? Not anymore. I was in love once. But I would rather not talk about it. Would you like a little cold pheasant? What happened? I don't want to bore you. Oh, you couldn't possibly. Well... It was my freshman year at Princeton. There was this girl, her name was Nellie. Her father was the vice president of Hupmobile. She wore glasses too. That summer we spent our vacation at the Grand Canyon. We were standing on the highest ledge watching the sunset when suddenly we got this impulse to kiss. I took off my glasses, she took off her glasses. I took a step toward her, she took a step toward me. Oh no! Yes. Eight hours later, they brought her up by mule. I gave her three transfusions. We had the same type blood, type O. But it was too late. Talk about sad. Ever since then, numb, no feelings, like my heart was shot full of Novocaine. You poor, poor boy. Yes, all the money in the world, and what good is it? Mint sauce or cranberries. How can you think about food at a time like this? What else is there for me? Is it that hopeless? My family did everything they could. Hired the most beautiful French upstairs maids. Got a special tutor to read me all those books that were banned in Boston. Imported a whole troupe of Balinese dancers, you know, with those bells on her ankles and those long fingernails. What a waste of money. Have you ever tried American girls? Why? Is that anything? Thanks, just the same. You should see a doctor, a good doctor. I have. I spent six months in Vienna with Professor Freud, flat on my back. Then there were the Mayo Brothers, injections, hypnosis, uh, mineral baths. If I wasn't such a coward, I'd kill myself. Don't say that! There must be some girl someplace that could... If I ever found a girl that could, I'd marry you just like that. Would you do me a favor? Certainly. What is it? I may not be Dr. Freud or a male brother or one of those French upstairs girls, but... Could I take another crack at it? All right, if you insist. I'm afraid not. Terribly sorry, 